A parable. What is it? Well, it's a little story with a lot of truth in it. An earthly story with a heavenly meaning. The story you're about to be told reminds us of a parable that Jesus told. A parable that teaches us a very special lesson about God. School days in the ocean. Deep at the bottom of the sea is an old pirate ship. It was sunk many years ago, and the fish in that part of the ocean decided to use it as a schoolhouse for their growing youngsters. Let's go into the classroom and see some of the students. Just look at those bright and happy faces. Class hasn't even started yet, but they're already in their places, studying their favorite subjects. Uh-oh! Here come two of the sluggard kids, after the tardy bell has rung, as usual. Miss Bluefin Tuna, their teacher, looks a little angry. What's the matter with you, sluggards? You're late again. Hurry up now, hurry. Oh, uh, I guess we overslept. <sighs> Sorry. This is the last day of school before summer vacation. Miss Tuna has a shelf full of pearls, and she's giving one to each of her students. Line up here, boys and girls. I have some summer homework for you. Uh, no! no not more homework! Now, now, it isn't that bad. I'm going to give you each a nice shiny pearl. Oh, boy! Pearl! Oh, oh, wonderful! Pearl! During the summer, it will be yours to use the best way that you know how. In the fall, you will come back and tell me what you have done to be worthy of this gift. Eager to get busy, the flying fish dash to the surface of the sea as soon as school is out. They're off to a flying start. Let's see, let me see. A pearl now. I wonder what I'm going to do with it. And the other fish make room as Tommy Torpedo, the electric eel, hurries off with his pearl. Gangway, look out! Let me out of here! Tommy is full of electricity, you see. And it isn't safe to get too close to him. Well, can't disappoint Miss Tuna. Gotta find a way. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Round and round swims the striped marlin, searching for an idea. He knows that if he just thinks long enough, he'll know how to use his pearl. Back in their cave, Bud and Dudley, sluggard, aren't doing a single thing. Hey there, sluggards. Are you thinking about your pearls? Us? Uh, well, I guess I ought to do something with this. Uh, let me see. Maybe I ought to take a little nap first and think about it tomorrow. Uh. Well, here it is, another day. And I suppose uh, this pearl might get lost while I nap. Uh. Then Miss Tuna really would be mad at me. Oh, I'll just put it in this little old hole for the summer. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be good and safe there. But with Tommy Torpedo, things were different. There must be lots of things I can do with this pearl. Of course, there's one thing I do better than anything else. Maybe the pearl can help me use my electricity. And Tommy was right. He traded his pearl for machinery and had himself all connected up with wires and switches. Hey, how's this for a fine power plant? My neighbors have more electricity than they've ever seen, and I don't give them a shock either. Jimmy Marlin is still wondering about his pearl, but he has to take time off to hunt for his noontime meal. No taste could be profounder than a flounder in a chowder. <laughs> well, now, this 
looking for lunch gives me an idea. <laughs> well, come on there, Mr. Oyster. Into the sack with you. Yes, and your friends, too. Now, you are just what I need for my plan. <laughs> well, glad I knew where to look for the shrimp family. And this old chest is just the thing to store them in. <laughs> You're doing with that ship's hat on. And you're not gonna latch on to me. No, sorry. Maybe by now, you've guessed Jimmy Marlin's plan, too. Evening, Mrs. Blubbermouth. Delighted to see you. How do you do, sir? I've got your favorite dish tonight. Oysters on the half shell. Yes, Jimmy Marlin has used his pearl to buy supplies and has made this old seashell into the ocean's most popular restaurant. Well, vacation is over, and everyone is hurrying back to school. Well, almost everyone. Here come the sluggards, after the tardy bell again. At the last minute, they remembered their pearls and stopped to dig them up. And so, they were later than ever. Um, I wish we'd have gotten an earlier start. I wonder why it's so hard to get up in the morning. Tommy Torpedo just couldn't wait to tell the teacher what he'd been doing all summer. Look here, Miss Tuna. I've earned lots of money. I built a power plant with the pearl you gave me, and fish families for miles around are using my electricity. Very good, Tommy. You deserve an A. And what about Jimmy Marlin, who used his pearl to build a seafood shell? Jimmy Marlin, your restaurant is simply superb. You get an A, too. Dudley Slugger, you're next. What have you done with your pearl? Um, well, um, here it is, ma'am. You see, I didn't lose it. I kept it buried so it would be nice and safe and nothing would happen to it. <laughs> hey, how come I get an F? Come now. You know there are two ways to do things. The good way and the lazy way. And the lazy way deserves an F. This story reminds us of one that Jesus told. The money used in those days was called talents. One talent was worth about a thousand of our dollars. In the parable, before the master of a house went on a trip, he called his servants and asked them to look after his wealth. The first servant, who received five talents, got busy at once. He probably used the money he was given to buy a caravan load of silks and spices. Then he took the silks and spices to the marketplace and set up his shop, where he sold them and earned enough money to buy some more. After much buying and selling, he had doubled his money. The second servant, who received two talents, also used his money wisely, perhaps as a builder, because he could do that well. He was able to earn two talents more than the master had given him. But the third servant was lazy. At night, while no one was watching, he dug a hole in the ground and hid the money there to keep it safe. When the master of the house returned, he called his three servants together to find out what they had done with his property. The first two servants were each rewarded for their good use of the talents entrusted to them. But the third servant received only the master's anger. The master took the one talent from the lazy servant, who had used his gift poorly, and gave it to the first servant, who had used his gift well. Jesus wants us to remember that God has given us many gifts. Our time, our abilities, our possessions, and above all, God's own love. We should not hide these gifts away, but should share them freely with others so that they might grow. <laughs> <laughs>